Hi, I'm a gamer's wife, and today I have a special collaboration with Frankie's Aquatics all about axolotls. So if you stay tuned on this channel, we're gonna talk about breeding axolotls and how to raise their young. And then afterwards, make sure you go to his channel, link in the description, so you can learn about five amazing facts that you probably didn't know about axolotls. So Frankie, tell us, I know that I've heard that breeding axolotls is incredibly easy. You just put them together and then eggs magically appear. Is that all there is to it? You are absolutely right. Breeding axolotls itself isn't all that complicated so long as you follow a few golden rules. The first one being is making sure your breeding pair of axolotls are well fed. They are conditioned, ready for breeding. Because it does tend to take a lot out of the little guys. So make sure they're well, well established and they've got a lot of weight behind them, much like myself. Second of all, you're going to want to make sure your water parameters are good. That's just a good practice to follow anyway, even if you're breeding or not. So make sure your ammonia levels are right, your nitrates and your nitrates are balanced correctly. And the last technique I tend to use with my breeding pair is lowering the water temperature ever so slightly. As we all know, axolotls do prefer cold water anyway, but if you just drop that temperature down ever so slightly more, you will activate the breeding mechanism and their train of thought. It does work. I tend to find that my breeding pair usually go into the breeding dance, as I like to call it, family friendly, once you do a water change. So lower temperature, nice cold water will activate your axolotls into breeding. Now once mummy has finished her job of laying the eggs, it's now time for you as the keeper to intervene. At this point you want to separate the eggs away from the parents and put them in something suitable that will hold the water that they need to be required to be kept in. I tend to keep mine in a breeder's rack which is nay high, which is basically a plastic chest of drawers which you buy from most hardware stores. It doesn't cost the earth, I think mine cost me £15 and I have two of them. And then basically I put the eggs into dechlorinated water and then I leave them be. And three weeks later you will start to see hatching of baby axolotl looking for their first meal. Now some people do, do tend to change out a percentage of the water. I personally don't. I find that it worked just as well if not better by not messing around with them or not intervening with them. You can also add an air stone for better circulation of air if you'd like to do that too. But again these are, these are techniques that I've tried and tested and I find they work just as well by leaving them alone for the three weeks. Now once the eggs begin to hatch that is when the fun really does begin. I separate my babies off the moment I see them out of their egg and I put them into a fresh container which contains fresh dechlorinated water. And then within about 24 hours, they'll start looking for their first meal. Now the way I do this is I hatch my own baby, baby brine shrimp and they work just fine. So I'm constantly hatching baby brine shrimp around the clock as you can probably imagine. It's a lot of mouths to feed. Once they start feeding, you'll notice they'll have an orange belly. That means they've got a full belly full of brine shrimp and that means you're doing good. Keep doing that and then they will grow, grow, grow and grow. So yes, when they get to a certain size, not so much age, I find it tends to be with size, they will start looking for bigger meals and that includes their siblings. It usually around the point where they get the front feet because that's when they start moving a lot more, they become a lot more mobile, then they start looking for bigger meals. So just keep an eye on it, monitor it closely and any nippers that you do see, just separate them off. And if you have the space and the facilities like I thankfully do, separate them off as soon as you possibly can. As soon as those little feet start growing, separate them off. And hopefully you will not have too many losses to hungry siblings. So I start selling my baby axolotls once their front feet are through and their back legs start growing through too, when they're basically more mobile. Um, they tend to be a couple of inches long at this point and they're um, looking for more food. I tend to try and convert my babies onto pellets to make it easier for the customer. He's obviously purchasing the axolotl. But at this point, you'll go from, you'll be on brine shrimp to begin with when they start growing up, again a little bit bigger and a little bit more hungry, you'll switch them onto frozen defrosted bloodworm. They tend to take the bloodworm really well and that is when they really start to max out and grow. So that, not long after that, probably about the three month mark, you'll notice that the bat legs come through too. And that is time ready when you can start listing them for their new homes, which is the bit that I really struggle with, especially on my first clutch. I really struggle because they're my babies. So when it comes time to sell your new babies, where do you even begin? There's an awful lot of them, hundreds, if not thousands. Where do you even begin? But for me, I go locally by word of mouth. Obviously social media obviously comes in and plays a good part in that too and eBay and that's all I've really needed to do so far So if I could share any solid words of wisdom with anybody within the hobby who is considering breeding and selling axolotls First and foremost just be prepared if you're not prepared you're gonna hit things are gonna hit you like a ton of bricks You've got to consider that they lay hundreds if not thousands of eggs a time 
and obviously each egg has the potential to become a little tiny axolotl which then becomes a slightly bigger axolotl which then becomes a fully grown axolotl so be prepared to look after all them babies first and foremost then consider if you don't sell them you're going to be left with an awful lot of axolotls that are going to need feeding they're going to need around the clock care can you just make sure you have the facilities to house them and look after them should they not sell Frankie, thank you so much for taking the time to answer all my questions. For people who want to learn more and get in contact with you, where can they go? So if anybody would like to get in contact with me, you can obviously, of course, find me over on Frankie's Aquatics YouTube channel. That is where I kind of upload every week, every Monday. It's going to be a fun and exciting video in regards to accidental care and do's and don'ts and all that other fun stuff. And yeah, I'll hopefully speak to you all very soon. Thank you for checking out the video. And to ta for now. If you've made it all the way to the end of the video, make sure to go over to Frankie's channel and check out our other collaboration video on five amazing facts about axolotls. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video.